everyone, welcome back to the Warsaw Security Forum here in the Polish capital. Uh, I'm your host, Claudia Czerwińska from TVP World, and now we're going to focus on energy. And for that, I'm joined by my next guest, Mr. Francois Xavier Bellamy, a member of the European Parliament as well as the vice chair of the EPP Group, and our expert here today on energy. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for having me. So as we're looking, we are almost at the three-year mark when it comes to the war in Ukraine, something that has particularly affected the European energy sector. Um, if you were to describe France and the energy sector as of now, what would be the characteristics? Where are you now? I think you're very right in pointing this main event that has been the launching of this aggression from uh, Vladimir Putin against Ukraine. It has been a wake-up call uh, in many sense, of course, and uh, for Europe, especially in terms of energy security, mm -hmm. because we experienced in this moment that the bet on dependency that had been, in a way, the main strategy of the European Union was uh, proving to be a mistake, and not only a mistake, but also a fault against our democracies. Because if we want to keep our freedom, if we want our member states to remain sovereign on their decisions, then we have to avoid being dependent on foreign states which do not share our uh, value-based approach of what should be uh, politics. So uh, in this moment, we need to regain our energy security. And for this, we will need a broad sense of a uh, broad range mm -hmm. of uh, technologies, including, of course, where France is uh, mainly concerned, of course, uh, including the nuclear energy. Because at the same time, we also have to face the climate challenge mm -hmm. and uh, fighting against the climate change involves, we all know it, decarbonizing our economy. Oh, yes, definitely. This goes through energy and low carbon energies have to be um, uh, there taken into account. There has to be that account. natural de uh, decarbonization tool. Of course, this is a huge challenge because we know where we are starting from, we know where we want to go, we know that as Europeans we have a huge uh, path to go mm -hmm. to, to this decarbonization. Already we are making better than other parts of the world, but then it's also something that we should continue to develop. And in this sense, I've very much fought in the previous mandate in the mm -hmm. European Parliament in favor of the main principles that should be at the center of our rational approach of these issues, principle of technological neutrality. This is absolutely uh, key because if we continue fighting against low carbon uh, sources mm -hmm. of energy, like for example nuclear, then we will of course end up in a mess, economic mess, social mess, mm -hmm. climate emergency. I'm very happy and that you mentioned the nuclear danger. energy because um, I actually brought some data uh, regarding France's movements when it comes to nuclear energy. Uh, so we had a government policy which was announced in 2014 which says aim to reduce nuclear by 50% by 2025. Then it was delayed in 2019 to 2035 and uh, Finally, the idea was abandoned in 2023. Too late. This was a big mistake. But this decision, was it made only because of the war in Ukraine, the uh, rising energy prices, the monopoly that Russia held over Europe? Or was it also related to something else? It was related to reality, you know. Why was this decision made to go to 50% of nuclear energy, uh, to lower the, the part of nuclear energy in the energy mix in France? It was because uh, at the time, socialist president, François Hollande, mm -hmm. made an agreement with the Greens and he had to offer them something. And what he offered was closing nuclear plants, which in a way is also, if I may enter into the political debate, a sign that some who speak a lot about climate change do not take it for serious. Because when you close a nuclear plant in France, you are necessarily more dependent on mm -hmm. fossil fuels. Even if you go to intermittent renewable energies, the fact that they are intermittent involves that you have to uh, develop gas uh, power plants to, to, to find the, the, the mm -hmm. good balance so that the energy mix is working. So if we want again to take seriously uh, the climate issue, but if also we want to stay safe in mm -hmm. terms of democracies, because what also we have to assess is that the anti-nuclear lobbying has been 
heavily funded in Which the European to institutions, my next question. Also, also by Russia. It, it's interesting that you mentioned this, because I wanted to ask your opinion on the fact that when we look, for example, at the nuclear sector in Germany, after 2011 Fukushima uh, power, a nuclear power plant disaster, Germany started withdrawing its nuclear power. Um, and they are not really focused on climate. They are not focused on the situation that is currently taking place in terms of energy in Europe. What's your opinion on that move of withdrawing from the nuclear? Who was warning at that time the, the Germans uh, about this decision? It was countries like Poland, countries like uh, 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 Central and Eastern European countries who were saying that the bet on dependency mm -hmm. to the Russian gas would lead us into a huge democratic weakness. And there we are. We saw that uh, Vladimir Putin was able to blackmail the Europeans with negotiations on, 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 on gas uh, issues. And, and it had to go to the war in Ukraine. And this weakness necessarily was an encouragement uh, to, 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 to Vladimir Putin mm -hmm. to launch this aggression. Uh, it had to, 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 to go to this terrible situation so that we finally recognized that we need again to mm -hmm. produce ourselves our energy. And, and the transition uh, has to, to be also focused on climate, but at the same time on energy security and on uh, uh, social issues, because energy is very much connected to the social issues Obviously, that many households so, uh, are facing. You know, when it comes to safety and security, safety and security translates directly to having independent energy sources that are going to be sustainable, which brings me to some data from the search, uh, Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air, because you mentioned uh, Vladimir Putin's blackmail, and I would like to hold on to that for just a second. Uh, in June, according to that center that I just quoted. In June 24, uh, you was the largest importer of La Russian LNG, uh, purchasing 54% of Russia's total exports, followed by China at 22% and Japan at 18%. And then we go into Belgium, Spain and France, importing exclusive L LNG from Russia in June this year, um, with uh, spendings in France of 151 million euros in June of this year. Of so what does, that, what does that tell us about the French independence in terms of energy? Energy, um, that regardless of the war, there is still such a massive spending when it comes to, to that gas, to that resource. What it tells us is that we are not independent. I mean, we should now work on a real strategy of uh, energy security in Europe. And this is our main challenge today. According to you, what's, the, what's that strategy? What, if you were to say what France has to do in order to cut this spending. Because, for example, we have total energies, and we only a few months ago heard that the UK is going to, um, is going to buy uh, fossil fuels from that total energies in France, which is taken from Russia. So there is definitely that codependence in Europe. It's not only, you know, it's not only the LNG that we know we are buying from Russia. Definitely. It's also, this is just yes, of a course, piece of information. It's facts and figures. But it's also other sources of fossil fuels that are circulating through intermediaries. I think of, for example, Azerbaijan, you know, uh, the European Union signed a, a memorandum on importing uh, gas from Azerbaijan, mm -hmm. which is, and we all know it because it's documented, in fact, coming from Russia. So we are in a way also trying to uh, close our eyes on our very dependency continuing on Russia in spite of all sanctions. So what we mm -hmm. have to do is now, again, invest in producing more clean energy that is uh, uh, connected to this uh, energy security uh, potentials mm -hmm. that we have in Europe today. In terms of your work at the, as a member of the European Parliament, what happens, if I may ask, what happens uh, within that group, within the European Parliament? What do you propose for countries to, to consider in terms of being more independent? We are working right now on a low carbon strategy. I think we need to have a global picture on the energy security. We need also to connect better our mm -hmm. countries in terms of energy security. This will be absolutely decisive. We need to provide certainty. You know, we have now a momentum where we need to invest a lot of money, a lot of 
public money, of course, but also private money, the private sector, has to engage in uh, uh, developing sources of energy. In France, for example, we are at the eve of the launching of a new nuclear program for mm -hmm. the country. This will require a lot of investments, so we need clarity. What investors don't like at all, and we can understand this very easily, is uncertainty. Mm -hmm. It's the reason why I deeply regret that in the European Commission right now, the portfolio of energy has been given to a commissioner who happens to be anti-nuclear, for example. I think that this is uh, a battle of the past, you know. It's a, a battle that we should now uh, accept uh, to, to turn the page on. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have to turn to the future. And the future, again, is technological neutrality. Whatever source of energy which is low carbon, resilient and provides independence and energy security should be part of the mm -hmm. energy mix in Europe. As my final question, we're at a very particular moment when it comes to war in Ukraine. It's almost been three years. Uh, there might be a change of president uh, happen. There will be a change of president happening in November this year. Uh, there are different scenarios for that taking place. If the war in Ukraine were to end anytime soon, do you think that European countries after a while are going to go back to business as usual when it comes to dealing energy with Russia? I hope not. We should not. I'm afraid it could be the case. And we saw, of course, for example, after COVID, we all were thinking of the lessons that needed to be taken from this episode. We saw that business as usual comes, by, comes back quite, quite quickly, sadly, when, when the crisis is not mm -hmm. uh, on the table anymore. Um, in, in my perspective, uh, the, main, the main challenge for Europe right now, you were mentioning the American elections, is that we should not look at the American elections, namely at the results of the elections mm -hmm. in two, three or four states of the United States of America. We should not let our destiny uh, um, be dependent on this outcome. You know? America is economy a friend. economy is still a circular system when you of think course, about it. America, Americans are friends. The uh, United States of America will always be a strong partner from the mm -hmm. European Union. Uh, but we should not feel ourselves uh, completely binded by what is decided by the American people. You know, um, this is absolutely key. And when we consider also energy and, and uh, uh, security issue, for example, when we speak about NATO, you know, mm -hmm. NATO should be a strong alliance. But for a strong alliance to take place, you need strong allies. You need strong partners on both sides of the Atlantic. So now the main challenge for it's Europe a is, game. do we want to be a strong partner? Do we want to be an autonomous partner? Do we want to provide security as Europeans to the citizens of our countries? Finally, very shortly, do you think we have what it takes as a continent in order to be able to, still re to, to become more sustainable but still remain a force to reckon with? Of course. Of course, we have the energy, we have the intelligence, we have the youth, we have uh, the dynamics, we have the roots, we have everything to uh, write our own story in the years and decades to come. The only question is, do we want it? Do we have the will for it? And it's a question of will, you know, politics is about mm -hmm. will. And I think now we are at a crossroads for Europe. And this question of political will is not only it's for politicians, but one. for all definitely Europeans as now. Thank you so much. I very Thank much you. appreciate for, for your invaluable insight and for all these interesting topics that we touched upon. Thank you again. Francois Xavier Bellamy, a member of the European Parliament, was my guest talking about energy and the energy sector in Europe. Uh, I was your host, Claudia Czerwinska. Please stay tuned here on TVP World for more.